welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers, a compilation of interesting and useful information when working with model steam engines and boilers. This one is part 14, and it's about the importance of making steam inlet and exhaust piping as neat as possible when building a model steam plant. This video is an edited trailer from my series A Model Steam Plant with Three Steam Engines. I recommend watching the complete series which contains a lot more information. Oh no, and now the piping begins, so this is the worst part of the job for me. I'm using this Chinese pipe bending tool, which allows me to put very tight bends in the copper piping. And the piping is 5 seconds of an inch or 4 mm pipe, and these are quite tight bends, and it looks okay. The more piping that you have on a steam plant, the neater that it needs to be. You have to think it through before you start, and it's most important that the pipe runs follow each other where necessary. These are the steam inlet pipes to the engine. A word of caution, once you cut the initial piece of pipe to length, always clean up the end, because you will scratch your baseboard very badly if the ends of the copper pipe are sharp. That's two down and one to go. This is the last piece of copper pipe going into position, and this is the longest one. It goes all the way from the boiler, all the way to the small vertical engine at the other end of the baseboard. Now all the pipes are silver soldered, they all have unions on them, so it's time to test them. I've connected my compressed air line to the boiler, and when I open the valves, one at a time, off they go. These single cylinder engines are normally not self-starting, but when I opened the valves on the aerial engine and on the Perseus engine, the crankshaft was positioned in exactly the right place, so the engines started all by themselves. It's more usual when opening the steam valve to have to rotate the flywheel until it goes on its own. As usual, I had forgotten to tighten a couple of the union nuts, I do this, I don't know why, I'm generally preoccupied with other aspects of the job. The threads on the exhaust outlets of these engines are only 3 sixteenths by 40 threads per inch, which is very small. And if I was to pipe these engines using 3 sixteenths by 40 threads, the union nuts would be far too small and therefore the pipe would be very small. And the whole point of a gas engine is to get rid of the gas in a large volume and very quickly as soon as it's done its work and a steam engine is a gas engine, because steam is an invisible gas. Very unlike the stuff that comes out of your kettle and the chimney of steam locomotives, be the traction engines or locomotives on the railway, because that is water vapour. Anyway, on with the job. This is my old micrometer, and I'm just checking that it's set to 0 0.250, which is a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to cut this part of the metal bar to a quarter of an inch in diameter. I'm machining and threading the quarter inch side first, then once it's parted off I will reverse it in the chuck and machine the other side. So that's one of the thread adapters completed, I have to make another two. Mass production for beginners. I'm really sorry about this, but after that mass production I was in the mood for a bit more piping, so I piped the water pump into the system. This is the exhaust adapter that I'm going to fit to the Perseus, but the problem is that it's not in a good place. The union adapter fits, but then the nut doesn't want to go on. I'm quite puzzled as to why these three engines don't have exhaust fittings in the first place. But never mind, I'll make my own. This is my answer to the exhaust fitting for the Perseus. This is a PM Research 90 degree elbow, and I had to re-tap the thread to make it compatible with all my quarter by 40 fittings. This part of the job wasn't planned, but in order to fit the exhaust adapter to the engine, it has to come apart. I just remove the cylinder from the bed plate. Then with the help of some Loctite 542 and a copper shim washer, I rotate the part into the correct orientation. As soon as I've lubricated all the moving parts of every engine, and I'll do this at high speed just to make it a quicker process, it's finally time to start the test. I open the steam valve to the small vertical engine, and that works OK. Then I open the steam valve to the aerial engine, and that works fine too. And with a quick flick of the flywheel, the Perseus engine bursts into life also, but the other two stop. It's a bit of a balancing act to get all the engines to run together. The boiler's quite small and immediately the pressure drops, but these engines are not under load, they work quite well. The pressure drops fairly quickly, but the engines keep going, which is a good thing. I'm going to pump some water into the boiler to see how far the pressure goes down. 
and when I pump the water in the engines still run which is a good thing and the pressure drops to a very low figure but nevertheless the engines are still rotating which is all that I want really. Ordinarily I would use string on the steam inlet pipes of these engines but this steam is really not very hot by the time it's got down these long pipes and also white painted string would become very dirty very quickly if any attempt was made to clean the piping so I think for this plant the piping once it's all straightened out is going to look much better in natural copper. I'm going to remake the pipe run from the water tank to the hand pump because it's a bit too long and I had to put a kink in it and I don't like that. But the good news is all of my copper pipe runs do not leak. This red vertical engine named after the Egyptian goddess Isis needs the piston rod repacking because it's leaking water a bit. I will do this tomorrow as I make some fine adjustments to the plant before the owner picks it up on Thursday evening. Time for me to stop talking after saying thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.